Can you see it, Alok? Uh, not at the moment, no. Okay. I don't know what's happening. Oh my God. Don't worry. Take your time. There's no hurry. Interesting. Can I try again? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've made you co-host as well, just in case. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's share, right? I mean, I did that last time. Share. Yep, you did. So it's sharing the screen. It's, ask, it's asking me PDF or PowerPoint. I'll just choose the PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can see the PowerPoint on the screen, you can choose it. You choose the PowerPoint. Yep. Okay. Interesting. I don't know why it's not allowing me this time. This is my PowerPoint, share. It's not letting me, uh, sorry. So can you see multiple screens on your uh, on your laptop or desktop? I only opened the PowerPoint. You've only, only opened the PowerPoint. OK. Yeah, but it's, it, I'm, I'm, when I click share this time, asking me, attach a copy instead. So I chose the PowerPoint. And welcome to Outlook. Next. Hmm. Sorry, I look, it's not happening. Oh, it's okay, not a problem. What we might be able to do is, uh, mm -hmm. I'm I'm back to work tomorrow. We can have a look at it and see how that works. Okay. Uh, don't worry, absolutely no problem. So the next person who I've got is Dr. Rana. Dr. Rana, would you like to share your screen? Hi. Yes. Uh, can you see my screen? Amazing. The correct uh, one. No, it's not that one. Sorry. Not a problem. Uh. Is it in a presenter mode at the moment or? Uh, it's not in presenter mode. You'll have to click on presenter mode at the bottom. Just there. Perfect. That's it. Now it's in presenter mode. So you're audible and visible. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Uh, so the background is, um, it was the 38 weeks, uh, baby birth weight, 3.8 kilograms was born by an emergency cesarean section in labor due to thick meconium and, um, and, um, and some decelerations, decelerations on the CTG. Uh, there was a clinical um, echo diagnosis of severe PBHN and meconium aspiration syndrome. Um, this baby was full, was on full support in high frequency uh, nitric and uh, inotropes as well. So I did the first ultrasound scan at around 10 hours of age. Uh, I used the GE machine E90, and we've got the probe of S12, which has a frequency between uh, 12 and nine. So on that one, I think I used the frequency of nine on this baby because it was a big baby. Big baby. Uh, just to start. Very nice. Are you oscillated? So uh, at that point, uh, the baby was on the on the oscillator. Uh, sorry, I think I moved on one. So the beautiful images. Thank beautiful. you. Yeah. Uh, so the first the first image on the right side of the screen. Uh, so this is L one. Uh, we can see that the uh, plural line. You can see the plural line. There is some sliding, but not very much uh, sliding. I think that was just because the baby was on the oscillator. Uh, there is some thick uh, plural lines and mainly is just um, a B profile there. I think I can see uh, there is some possible as well consolidation uh, right there and also here at the bottom. Uh, 
Um, I have to say that because the uh, the the uh, footprint of that probe is quite small and the baby is big, so I took few images of all uh, areas, but I only chose one just to represent what that particular what that uh, profile had shown. So I saw on the L one it was mainly um, mainly a, a B profile with suspected uh, some consolidation there at the bottom. Here on L2, um, I can see that the plural line is also sliding, uh, but not very well sliding as it should be. And I think that is, again, because of the baby was on the oscillator. Um, I can see some uh, mainly uh, B lines, quite consolidated, but some A lines as well. So there was some aeration in L2. So I would call that an AB profile. Yep, I would agree. Uh, moving on to L3 and L4. Uh, L3, L3 here, you can see that the plural line is quite thick and uh, it's mainly just B lines, quite uh, quiet, um, coalescent uh, B lines. And here, I don't know if you can see it as well. It was more obvious on the, on the machine, but there is some areas here of consolidation. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Some air bronchogram there. Uh, here on L4 um, as well, the plural line as well sliding, uh, but it's quite thick and irregular, and it's mainly B profile with quite coalescent B lines. Very good. Very nice. Beautiful. The, the right lung. So uh, um, on R1, the plural line is also sliding, but it's not, again, not very well sliding. Um, mainly, well, it's an AB profile, so we can see um, a lot a lot of A line, uh, sorry, B lines, but some A lines as well. I have to say I dropped a B mode in here, but I didn't put it here, but it did not show the, um, uh, the barcode sign. Very so good. there was no pneumothorax in, in this area. Yeah, very nice. Uh, on R2 um, as well, the plural line is quite thick and uh, some minimal sliding, uh, mainly B lines, but some A lines um, here in the middle as well. So A, B profile. So the anterior part of the right lung is slightly uh, aerated. Excellent. Uh, mm. R3 and... R4. So here on R3, um, so we can see that so there is some plural line here, which is quite thick and irregular, but here the, the, uh, the plural line is quite broken um, with an area of consolidation here. Um, there is some air bronchogram, which I think it, there is a mix of um, static and um, uh, dynamic air bronchogram. I think these areas here are mainly static, but yep. I think there is yep. some here which yep. are dynamic. I agree. I agree. So, this, yep. so that's why I think this area is more like consolidation rather than a collapsed area. Uh, on R4, um, the plural line is quite thick and irregular, but it's mainly just a B profile here. Very good. So just meconium aspiration. Very nice. So on day three, this baby deteriorated with increased oxygen requirements, uh, and this is the X-ray. I've taken this X-ray with uh, with my phone, so there is some kind of reflection here. That is not uh, that. Oh, that that's is fine. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It, let's go yeah. back to your images, Doctor Anna, because they're beautiful. And I mean, I just wanted to say to everybody that again, you do not need to have a hockey stick uh, or a linear probe to actually be able to make diagnosis. And this is a very nice example of beautiful lung ultrasound. So we'll go right to the start because, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, sorry. That's all right, not to worry, take your time. Well, this so, is back to L1, L2. Yeah, so what I, I, I definitely say, like when you look at L1, you, you've, you've definitely got uh, like going in. And if I just think about the plura, it's it, it there is sliding the reason there's sliding is because you've got b lines coalescent possibly compact b lines i'd say big ones uh -huh. which basically move and they move with the oscillator i can so sliding absolutely without a diet i'd agree yeah. the plura looks a little bit on the thick side it's irregular now this is the challenge that we have with the 
using a you know a uh, the probe uh, that is a kind of a either a sector or an s9 is the the plura may appear slightly different but actually for me this is beautiful i would agree it's irregular i do wonder whether you've got some subplural consolidations there and the, the problem with the deep consolidation so that you see yeah. it's a little bit tricky yeah because we're using the sector probe and you lose your plural line so it may be that it is a deep consolidation or mm -hmm. it may be artifact as well and really what we'd like to see is origin and what i'd say is that this is very common uh, when you go to the left upper lobe so what you might have to do especially if you're using uh, a probe that's either a sector probe is move it or angulate it a little bit so that you can actually get that entire area mm. but these absolutely beautiful l1 image and l2 for me is very well aerated uh, i would i would actually say yeah this like if if i move to the left of your screen so there. yeah left there so again whether there's a subplural consolidation that you can see over there just coming in mm -hmm. uh, yep yeah, that dark area but definitely well aerated lung over there yeah so we'll move on so how many hours old was the baby at the stage uh she was about 10 hours of age at that point okay and uh, just one question from my perspective did you give her surfactant she did get surfactant yeah, yeah. yeah. but again uh, so this is after the surfactant's been given yeah yeah so i mean here again very nice basically uh, uh, an ais pattern in l3 uh an ais and uh kind of and sliding is visible you have subplural consolidations there just under the plural line now, yeah, yeah. the the challenge for us is if you don't have a history of meconium, making a diagnosis of RDS is also possible. Mm -hmm. But clinical correlation absolutely key. You've clearly got meconium, and yeah. then in your next image. So let's go to your next image. So again, well aerated lungs. Now, can I just say mm. uh, this concept that? Uh, you can see double lung points in meconium aspiration. You can see them in TTN and you can see them in RDS. So here you've got double lung points. You've got a B profile. So if you look at R1, extreme left. So if you just, yeah. yep, that's a B profile. Then just go to the other side, extreme right. That's also a B profile. And then you've got an A profile in between. So this is a double yeah. lung point. Uh, and what I'd say is that I can, with the eye of faith, see some comet tails with the A profile. And yeah. there, there are these lines, these horizontal lines that go all the way down, that they diverge. Yeah, mm. these are classically, these are called pseudo B lines or Z lines. They are, mm. they are, they are B line mimics. They are not true B lines. So you must not get confused. Oh. They're classical B line mimics. And uh, what you will often find is that uh, they don't quite take their origin all the way from the plural line. You have some comets at the top in between where the lung is aerated. But yeah. these these lines tend to kind of midway they start diverging and they widen up. So they they're actually B line mimics. But mm -hmm. this is a beautiful double lung point, and R two very similar. Again, you have subplural consolidations that are better visible in R two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful images. And then we'll go to the next image and let's see your consolidation. So now. Uh, when you look at R3, uh, hmm. and I would completely agree with you, I, I think this is more consolidation than atelectasis. Now, some people may get confused because there's no plural line visible. But for me, that's actually rib artifact because it goes all the way down. The darkness and the absence of the plural line is because you've got... Yes, yeah. But actually, if you see, you can see plural line just above with what is consolidation yeah. and then static air bronchograms and with the eye of faith i think if you magnify that area i would agree there's probably a line that goes in and out so again this would be a consolidation for me and uh, worth putting doppler on it just to see but uh, i mean yeah this then kind of so you can see this in rds as well but with your history i think i would agree this is very likely to be meconium aspiration and you've got a very nice b profile in r4 uh, with kind of yeah. uh, you know uh, coalesced B lines. Any questions from anybody? So let's see what the chat says. So Naz, yes, it is post-surfactant. Dr. Hamad wanted to see the 
the pseudo B lines or the B line mimics. If we just go back to your previous slide. So just in the middle there, yeah, just that straight line that comes down and diverges. Yeah. It doesn't go all the way to the top. It doesn't take its origin from the plural line. It becomes apparent lower down. Whereas if you look at the other B lines, they take their origin all the way from the plural margin. They are true B lines, but this is a B line mimic. And this must not be confused with a B line. And the reason for that is it does not extend all the way up to the plural. So some people will sometimes label this as B lines. They're, they're not true B lines because they do not originate from the plural. Mm -hmm. Does that help, Dr. Hamad? Okay, that's really kind. Uh, do you have any other cases? Uh, yeah, I just uh, have. Um, so on this baby, just yeah. three more uh, videos. Please, uh, please, so please. Baby deteriorated on day three with high oxygen requirements. And this is the chest X-ray, which she had. Uh, so just bilateral, I don't know if that you can see that, just bilateral um, uh, reticular opacities on both sides. Uh, so I did an ultrasound scan here. And I'll just show you what I saw on R3 because these are this is just to so see where what happened to that consolidated area here. Mm. Yep. Um, um, but I've shown three clips of this area because it was such a large area R3 with a yep. small print of the probe. Yep. Um, so you can see here uh, on on the view um, on the clip on the right. Uh, yep. So the pleura start um, on the left of the screen is is quite thick and and uh, irregular with lots of coalescent B lines, but right uh, next to it there is this area here which is consolidated with a broken uh, pleural line. Yeah. and uh, static and dynamic. I think this is a dynamic air bronchogram yep. and some fluid bronchogram here as well. Very nice, thought, beautiful. Uh, yeah, so for everybody, yeah. Sorry, I'm I, so I sorry. Yeah. yeah, I apologize. I'm interrupting you because it always excites yeah. me to see a fluid bronchogram. So for everybody, because you know I haven't shown you fluid bronchograms, that is a fluid bronchogram that you see in dark. It's beautiful. And I would agree that's that's a consolidation and then there's an absolutely beautiful image in R3, but I won't steal your thunder. Mm. Uh, so this is the uh, next part of R3 as well. You can see hepatization of, Very the, good. Uh, of the right lung here uh, is just basically all consolidated uh, tissue. And I think that is a fluid bronchogram, fluid bronchogram. as well here right at the bottom. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, with With some static bronchograms within, that are expanding and kind of collapsing with uh, inspiration, expiration. Uh, I mean, my, my worry at this particular point would be whether that could be a mnemonic consolidation and secondary infection. Uh, and again, because you've just lost your pleura, and this is what I would say to everybody, differentiating an atelectasis from a consolidation can be very difficult. You know, once you lose your pleura right up at the top margin, whether there's an element of atelectasis there as well, and the only reason I mentioned that is, so what else can you see there, Dr. Hamad? Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ali, I apologize. What do you think that is, that movement? Uh, that's the uh, pulsation. Yeah, that's lung pulse. That's the lung pulse, yeah, so, lung again, pulsation. Very classical with mnemonic consolidation. Mm -hmm. You've got all four features. It's beautiful. Uh, what's your CRP? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, and just one more. Please. Uh, this is the last one, uh, just to show you this um, area with um, shred sign, I thought. Um, there is uh, this um, um, basically consolidated area. I think that is a, 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 um, a dynamic air bronchogram there, but some static as well, static bronchogram and quite broken uh, plural line. So a big consolidation in this, in this area here. Yep. It's... It should, I would want it to be a little bit more irregular for it to be a, a fractal or a shred sign. Mm -hmm. Could it be a large atelectasis, an area of atelectasis, just subplural? Or it could possibly be, because it's very irregular to the right margin, I would agree. Yeah, so that, I, yeah. I just saw that there were some areas here of um, fluid bronchogram. Dynamic, dynamic bronchogram. So that's why I thought probably it's not atelectasis, it's, um, sure. it's a consolidated sure. area. 
Go fair ahead. point. Fair point. Actually, you're right. That's not a fluid bronchogram. That is a dynamic bronchogram going in and out. It looks a little bit dark below. So you're right. Actually, that would go in favor. I would have loved to have had a Doppler on it. Yeah. It would. You've done a Doppler? I didn't. No, I did it before no. the um, before you gave that lecture on um, on consolidation. So I did not do the Doppler on this one. Lovely, uh, beautiful images. I Thank have you. no critique. Yep. Uh, the CRP so was that's high. It, yeah. uh, that's the last slide. Sure. Okay, that's amazing. That's a beautiful case. Thank you. Look, I, I think I figured out my screen, if that's okay. Can yeah, I... yeah, sure, 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 sure. You yeah. can go for it, Dr. Leila. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ali. I'm so grateful. Okay. Beautiful and I've been admitting everybody, by the way. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Thank you so much, Dr. Leila. That's beautiful. Okay. So um, I'm just going to go to. So should we, yeah, beautiful. So, so uh, GE machine, we are using frequency linear probe of uh, 11, 9 to 11 at the depth of four. This is a 47 hours old. Actually, we did the scan, me and Ralia together. Uh, 1037 weaker, 2.47 kilogram, admitted to respiratory distress. And the baby was in DUPAP and was still needing 40% oxygen. And the team was asking themselves, this is pneumonia, uh, congenital pneumonia or TTN or RDS, and should we get surfactin at this time or not? That was the question. So we offered to do ultrasound. We did ultrasound of the chest. And this is, um, uh, uh, baby was prone position. So we started from the back, uh, R5. And what we see here, uh, sliding uh, flora, uh, more than four uh, ribs and more than three intercostal spaces. There is a thick area here, it could be subpleural uh, consolidation and P profile mainly. Beautiful image, Dr. Leila. So can I just say that taking the back in a baby who is on CPAP, they often back arch. And mm -hmm. can you see how there's complete continuity throughout? Uh, mm -hmm. There's always thicker tissue on the back, but despite that, you've got excellent penetration up to three centimeters. Your gain settings are appropriate. Uh, your, you know, I, I can see all the way down, and I would agree there's definitely what looks like a little bit of subplural consolidation with a B profile sliding throughout. Beautiful image. And, and are these uh, A lines? Um, yep, they are. They are. Can we yep. call it A B line, uh, A B profile here? I think if you call this a B profile with a little mm -hmm. bit of variation, you know, okay. I would be happy with that. If you said it's a, a kind of an AB profile, that would be acceptable as well. Okay. Yeah. And of course, he, we see some 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 dynamic uh, uh, bronchograms in the area here. I think there's subplural okay. consolidations. I would okay. call them subplural consolidation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is R6. Very nice. Uh, and here we see more, more kind of, uh, um, um, sorry, uh, more um, uh, sliding uh, plora again. And uh, one of my plays not working again. Um, That's okay. They're playing beautifully, yeah. Dr. Leila. Very nice yeah. images. And you see, uh, I could call here a double, a, a double lung point because you see the A profile here, sorry, uh, and B profile here. I would agree. Okay. So this is, this is when the baby starts moving. I was struggling to, to get it in the perpendicular, the probe. And again, we see here mostly pre profile but I don't see any subpleural uh, consolidation here. We come into R4, pre profile again, and no subpleural uh, consolidation, and now we're sliding. The middle of R4, we'll just go back to R4, Dr. Mm -hmm. Leila. Uh, so mm -hmm. just if you play it again, this is R1. Uh, oh, R1? Oh. Uh, we go, uh, so we had R4. We just, okay. we will go. Yeah, sure. yeah. R4. Yeah, just there. Mm -hmm. I just wonder whether you do have subplural consolidation there, just especially in the middle of R4. Okay. Uh, yeah, just. Over here? Yeah, yes. That's... Yeah, just there and to the left. Okay, so yeah. this one here. Yeah. And yes. This one here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just wonder whether you have. They look certainly thicker than five millimeters. You know, if I mm -hmm. think about mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. I have the plain look. 
Okay, so I went back. I don't know why I'm going back to R4. No, okay, sorry. so 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 this area here and this area here, you saying, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. Okay, and then uh, now R1, we, we move the baby. Thicken plural now. I could see more subplural uh, consolidation. Yep. Definitely see some plural consolidation here. Yeah, and a, quite a thick plural, I would agree. R2, exactly the same. So I'm not yeah. going to waste time here. No problem. Um, okay, and then uh, uh, R2, uh, and this is, this is now we move into the left side, L1. Again, thicken, thicken with subplural and B profile mostly. Hmm. What do you think? I would agree. And I, I think you're right here. It's a little bit tricky whether mm -hmm. there are subplural, but definitely a blurred plural line, which okay. is relatively regular, a B profile, complete mm -hmm. compact B lines, possibly AIS, yeah, yeah. So I look here, we try to reduce the, the, the depth uh, and then we try to reduce the frequency to see if we can get the whole uh, um, B line to the end, but it, was, it was, wasn't easy. So still I'm, still, black out yeah, in here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm still able to interpret right up to three centimeters. Okay. So I, that looks more than acceptable to me. Yeah. Okay. okay. And now L2. Well similar done. Picture. Well done. The heart, mm -hmm. you know, it's always challenging. Very similar picture. I'd agree. Again, Just again, whether you've yeah. got some subplural consolidations there or whether mm -hmm. that's because the probe is not entirely 90 degrees. This one here. Yeah, yeah, so. Okay, okay. okay. So uh, when we came, uh, and that's what we thought. Mm -hmm. So we decided, decide, uh, sorry, uh, when we were doing, you know, we were doing the, 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 the study, there was an area coming to us like this, and we were not sure if this is a pneumothorax or pneumotestinum. So we put the, 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 put the top, uh, sorry, the main mode, and this is the picture we, we, we saw. So we thought well, this is, uh, it looks like a seashore. This is not a, a pneumothorax. Uh, I think you've got diaphragm there. Ah. I think you've got diaphragm there. That's why you're getting the wavy appearance. Yeah. Right. This, this is the diaphragm. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. No, that, okay. so that my feeling is the liver and you have where your okay. cursor is just the diaphragm. I and see. then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. But yeah, that would theoretically, if you went higher, you've got clear sliding. Absolutely no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, now we are, uh, I think this is uh, L4. Beautiful, yeah. And then L4 again. Um, and, and just just trying to practice what you taught us in the course. So we saw this area here we were worried about. So yeah. we, we, put, we did the a language, sorry, horizontal, uh, horizontal um, image yeah. view. And then we did also the doubler, but we don't see any uh, increased flow in the, in the doubler. No, no. So but I you definitely point. have subplural consolidation, especially if you look Somewhere at L5 here, right? in the middle. Yeah, oh, just sorry, below. Yeah. Uh, no, no, just there, there, play it again. So yeah, if you play it again. So just mm -hmm. in the middle, you can see that area of consolidation there. This one here? Yeah, okay. there, just come a little mm -hmm. bit lower. Can you see how it moves up and down from the plural line? So definitely you have subplural consolidation there. Yeah, okay. yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. See that up and down it moves. Yeah, very nice. Okay. And this is, I think, L6. Yeah. It's again, the same thing. Uh, mostly uh, I would go, I would go even uh, IAS. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Yep, yeah, AIS, no doubt about it. Okay, so here we're trying to do uh, the plot, the one you told us the last course. I, I don't know if we getting this right or not. So uh, I think uh, you've got liver there. Okay, that's that's all liver. Yeah, that's all liver. That's so all liver. This is all the diaphragm here. Yeah, and the question is whether you might have a little effusion there. Flu fusion, exactly. Yeah. It's that's mm -hmm. the left side. Uh, this this is this, the left side. Yeah, yeah the screen. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, my apologies. You're right. This is the left side. So this is the spleen. You can mm -hmm. see the diaphragm. And just below the diaphragm, there's an area of fluid. So just in the subcapsular space of... Over here. Just, uh, yeah, just above that, 
uh, yeah. there's there's a small pocket uh, triangle space oh. so just whether you've got a, a very minimal pleural effusion as well okay which is best seen in you know that view so yeah okay. so blow up I in the right hope, i just hope that's not pericardium actually just can we just have a look at it again sure yeah yeah cuz i just think that oh, might be the I heart see. and the pericardium and whether okay. he but it's very triangular. It's tricky to say. You've got rib above that, so that must be pleura. That must be pleura. Yeah, okay. yep. You're very That's low, Doctor Leila. You need to go mm -hmm. a little bit higher for the plaps point, and it needs a to be higher. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is the thrice side. So this is diaphragm. Yeah. Right, and that would yep. be the the lungs here, and this yep. is the the. Liver. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. And yeah, it's, I mean, completely white lungs. There's no aeration there. So what did you think about your diagnosis? So so looking at the baby, uh, you know, clinically, we thought in the end, this could be just advanced uh, um, TTN. I think uh, Ghali did disagree and she think it was, was RDS. We ended up not giving this baby uh, support and he was fine by next day. Okay. I mean, I suppose following the clinical course, we know that there's a spectrum where you can get a bit of both. Mm -hmm. And I think clinically, this is one of those cases which sometimes kind of hits in between. But from what you're describing clinically, you're probably right. It is probably TTN if it's resolved and you haven't had to do anything at all. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it just shows how challenging and confusing things can sometimes be. Serial ultrasounds here really help because yes. if you kind of uh, see the appearance of a lot of double lung points without treatment, then that is the convalescent phase of TTN and the diagnosis then goes more in favor of TTN as opposed to RDS. And that's why it's really important that if you know the first scan is confusing, that you can do serial scans to try and make a diagnosis and differentiate the two. And Alec, would you would do that even if the baby was improving clinically? No, no, you're right. No. I think if he's improving clinically, I wouldn't. Why should I handle him? But mm -hmm. like, if I just wanted to kind of think of confirming my diagnosis, and I, I did a subsequent scan for the purposes of kind of wanting to recognize. And I saw lots of double lung points come up with more of a, I would say, resolving kind of a pattern of, well, Dr. Liu says that if you see AIS with that pattern, then it favors TTN as opposed to RDS, which will have a much longer course. The subtural consolidations would have disappeared, whereas in RDS, they'll persist, especially if you haven't treated with surfactant. So, you know, that's a good differentiating feature. You didn't have the, yeah. The, yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, it would be eight, yeah. So um, again, the same machine and the same same depth and uh, frequency. So this is a, a four years old baby, preterm, 31 week and 1.8 kilogram. Who had received a, a steroid antenatally just for two, hour, two hours before the delivery. Baby required a CPAP about five minutes and start get, uh, getting more uh, requirement for oxygen. Uh, and then finally, uh, we put him in CPAP because he did very well uh, initially. And then uh, at six centimeters CPAP, uh, he went down to 27. I was really uh, curious because the baby was granting a lot. So I said, just let's do the, the scan and see what exactly we see. And, see. and thinking of the last, last you know, uh, talk about, you know, and prediction for surfactant. So this is the first slide. So would you like to go into slideshow mode, Dr. Lela? Oh, yeah, sure. God yes. bless you. Thank you. But, uh, play. Just at the bottom. Yeah, just at the yes. bottom right-hand side. Yeah. yeah. That's all right. Beautiful. So this is R1, hmm. and it's completely white lung. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I was telling everybody, like, you know, this baby might need surfactant later on. Um, this is R2. Um, sorry, L1. So... Uh, um, all the right side were the same, so just I presented one slide yeah. for, for the time. Okay. Um, L1. Yeah. Again, yeah. here we see subpleural uh, sub uh, uh, consolidation. Yeah. With some yeah. L3. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely subpleural consolidations there. Yep, with a white out, complete white lung. Mm. Both sides, but they are symmetrical. How old is the baby at this time? He was around uh, four hours. Okay. Yeah. Yep. L5, same. 
yeah white but completely white yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. Good slide for I, was, yeah. I was trying to do the trans, but I don't know if I succeed or not. Trans as a vision. So putting this, uh, the probe in the, in the middle and then pointing to the shoulders. To get the diaphragm. To get the diaphragm. Yeah. But, but I thought that was a diaphragm, but I'm not yeah, sure. If that I'm, is the diaphragm. Yeah. And this is, is all diaphragm. lung, right? That would be That's the correct. lung here. Yeah. Okay. So again, white, white lung in the, in the same, same place. Yeah. Yep. And 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 here, uh, I thought this would be um, a consolidation. Is that the left or right side? That would be the the right side. The right side. Mm. It's uh, just the probe is not horizontal. So whether you've mm -hmm. got a break in plural line, because it's okay. you're using in a, are you using the subdiaphragmatic view? Yes. Yeah. So I would try. To to avoid kind of making a diagnosis of kind of concern. It yeah. does look like a subplural atelectasis because you- Atelectasis, you yeah, there's no bronchogram there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah, no yeah. bronchogram, but yeah. yeah, you lose contact with the plura as well. Okay. My gut feeling is you probably have a little bit of subplural atelectasis there. Okay. So, I mean, there's good going RDS in this baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good going RDS. With... Did he need surfactant? Um, so what, what happened? He was fine until until uh, 24 hours of flight, and then around 40 hours of flight, the baby desaturated, and they tubed him and gave him surfactant. But actually, he had perforation, not uh, not not. Uh, he remained in 25 percent oxygen. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Very interesting case. But yeah, I would probably agree that's decent RDS that you've got over there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yes, that's that's everything we have. Thank here. you. Just stop sharing. Uh, we have uh, Kirti. Dr. Yeah. Hasoon will be joining us at quarter two. So. Shall I share then? Yes, please. I'd be very grateful. It's a very short case. I just wanted to show the slides of diaphragm. Yeah, you've got the diaphragm there. Very nice. So this was an extreme preterm baby at 26 weeks, 580 gram, who was now three months old on a low flow of 20 cc. You can go to a slideshow. That's so kind of you. I'm so grateful. My linear probe has the maximum frequency of eight hertz, and I've tried using auto gain and sharp to optimize the image. This was the first one. So here I tried to take it in the lateral area between mm -hmm. the, the sixth and the eighth intercostal space. And I yep. kept it of about two centimeters. Very nice. Um, and this I tried to measure. So as Dr. Adil had mentioned that you take three of each inspiration and expiration. And then I took an average of each of them and using the formula of T I minus E upon E. So that was 33% as diaphragmatic thickness fraction. And yep. it said more than 30% is considered as normal. Yep. Very good diaphragmatic excursion as well, just visible to the eye. Very nice. So just uh, what what is your baby on? Tubed, intubated, ventilated? and No, he's just on low flow. Amazing. That's Amazing. I mean. Yeah, it's beautiful diaphragmatic excursion. What is worker breathing like clinically? So he has some intercostal recessions and respiratory rates are always between 60 and 70, but really not in much distress. Very nice. And this was the second one where I had kept the probe between the mid-clavicular line and the anterior axillary line, and I kept a depth of about seven centimeters. Yep. And in order to make sure that it was perpendicular, to the diaphragm, I had to change the angulation. And then to look at the excursion, and then I took the three, average of three of these, which came to about five millimeters. And in Dr. Adil's talk, he had mentioned that in preterms, it can be up to an average of six millimeters plus yep. minus one. So yep. I thought Normal. this was okay. Yep, very okay. good, well done. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have any other cases to share? Uh, 
because uh, Dr. Hassoon is going to be a little bit late. So there's definitely an opportunity to see one more case before I start my talk. Hi, Alok. Um, oh, yeah. I can Go for it. I... Go for it, Doris. It's not as interesting as Kurt has kitties on every, or anybody, any other person's on. It's just a simple kind yeah. I had. Okay. Okay, so um, this was the scan I did. Um, sorry, it's not moving. Okay, okay. So this was a 29 week, uh, 29 plus two week, uh, 1.15 kilograms at birth. Mom had two doses of steroids and Maxol. And um, baby was born by emergency section because of suspected abruptio. Baby was born in quite poor condition, and you can see that from the arterial cord gases that were done. But baby responded to resuscitation, and I mean, with IPPV was intubated, given Curacef, and transferred to the unit. Um, and after the Curacef was ventilated um, with volume guarantee of five mils per kilo, and in air. And I was, I was because of the poor stats. I think I was a little bit doubtful and sus and suspicious of how the baby would be. So I did a long ultrasound at eight hours of life. So these were the X-rays, um, initial X-rays at birth, and um, I think the first X-ray was done while well. they had inserted the lines, and they repositioned the lines and the ET tube. I repeated the X-ray again, and that's the, the new X-rays on the right. Um, so I started with the left side and you can appreciate um, the pleura looks very irregular and um, with lots of micro um, consolidation, I think. There is um, pleural sliding, which you can see clearly. And you can see quite compact B lines. I couldn't, this is clearly an A profile. I couldn't see, um, Sorry, B profile. Sorry, I couldn't see A lines. Sorry. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. You, you're yeah. absolutely right. Doris, my only comment would be you don't need five centimeters of depth in such a small baby. It just also helps your image because what happens is you, you basically get a dark area at the bottom. Even if yeah. you use 3.5, that would be fine. But it's a beautiful image. And again, if you look at the differences between the pleura of a term baby that Leila showed us versus mm -hmm. the pleura here, and again, the severity, I mean, this baby has good going RDS. You know, you've got sub plural consolidations all the way through. You've got yeah. one small deep consolidation in the middle. Yeah. You want to point to that? Yeah, just there again. Now, the point is it kind of has its origin from the plural line. It's fallen back. So there's probably a little bit of atelectasis there. But yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I would agree with your findings completely. You know what? I keep I doing that just, you know, the settings have been preset. So when I adjust, they default back. So what you need to do, what you need to do, and I'm on the unit this week and I'm hoping it won't be crazy. You need to press the frequency button and keep it down and then change once. Okay. And that basically allows you to go out of the preset setting. I'm going to show you some image optimization in my talk today and how okay. you do it. Yeah. Okay. And then this is L2. We can appreciate how irregular the plural looks. Um, there is plural sliding, but lots of uh, mic of so plural consolidation um, that we can see clearly. Yeah. Um, I mean, B lines clearly, and that this this is these are A lines. And um, I thought this was uh, at this point was a double long point. I hope I'm correct. And I put this down as an AB profile. I don't know if. I correct. would probably call it a B profile, maybe with a little bit of lung aeration because you got basic AIS. Maybe, uh, yep, there's some A lines coming in deeper, mm -hmm. but yeah, possibly uh, a double lung point. Uh, you're probably, this is because L2 is coming, you're getting the diaphragm there. Mm -hmm. And I just think you might have a small effusion there as well, just below. It's, it's very hard. different. Right yeah, here? there, that that pocket, absolutely. But the question is, is that spleen coming in with the diaphragm as opposed to A lines? Often when you go that low and you start getting the spleen in, 
the question is whether those are a lines or that's just uh, maybe the diaphragm coming into view with the spleen below that a little bit tricky but what i'd say is definitely reduce your your depth okay yeah okay and um and also, image, yeah. Very nice image, yeah. I appreciate that. It's how yeah. irregular the plural is, um, mm -hmm. plural consolidations, um, plural sliding, and I mean, clearly a B profile. I couldn't see any yeah. A line. Yeah. And for L5, um, you can, I don't know whether these are sub plural consolidations or air bronchograms. Um, I would label them subplural consolidations. I would. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what you can do is if you're confused, you can zoom into that zone, reduce your depth. Go. So this is a really good way of trying to differentiate them is you can reduce your depth to one to two centimeters. You don't need to alter the focus with the G and it will basically concentrate in that area. And that basically allows you to zoom in. Uh, okay. The other thing, obviously, with the G is you can actually. Uh, uh, there's a mode on it which basically allows you to see the plura a little bit better with the sharp mode, which uh, I don't think you have on at the moment, but I can show you how to use that. But yep, I would agree. Subplural consolidations. Yep. A B took, profile. Yeah, the posterior axillary line um, to try to view the posterior aspect because I couldn't turn the baby. Okay, mm -hmm. so clearly a B profile. Um, I thought there were some comet tails. Um, Yep. Comment Your odd over. comment tail, especially at the left of the screen. Yep. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. R1. Um, so R1, the pleura is um, irregular, but much better than on the left side, as we can see. We can still appreciate some pleural consolidations. Um, to the right of the screen, it's almost white out. Those are B lines. I mean, they're yep. almost white out. And these are A lines. Very also. good. These are A lines. Yeah. This I completely agree would be. Uh, yeah. And whether this is post surfactant? Um, well, this, this, uh, it's certainly post surfactant eight hours after the baby was born. So eight hours after surfactant, yeah. So it's the right on. lung has had a little bit more than the left. You know, you've got aeration of that right lung, and that is often the case. And especially the upper areas often yeah. get better aeration. So you've kind Actually, of got a double lung point there. Yeah. Yes, I thought yeah. so. Yeah. The ETT on the first X ray was quite um, far in. So I, I, I don't know if they gave the surfactant with that, because if they did, then that will account for why the right side is more irritated. Most of the surfactant going to the right side there. Um, so R2, um, um, you can appreciate the plural, regular plural, so plural consolidations, uh, mainly a B profile. And I think this is the long pause. Um, uh, is it liver? liver. Wait. Liver. This yeah. is a liver. Yeah, yeah liver this, with this is long pulse. Can you describe this as the long pulse, or it's just the liver? Um, my gut feeling is it's moving very slowly. My gut feeling is it's just normal sliding. I don't think there's a lung pulse there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I might be wrong. No, you're probably right. You're the expert. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not the expert. Actually, yeah. We're still. All of us are learning and. I think the beauty of uh, the learning phase is so you must always trust your clinical correlation, your images, because you're doing them and you know exactly where you are. But yeah, I would I would think that R3, again, you've got a double lung point there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then at this dynamic air bronchograms, I thought I was... I think the subplural consolidations. Consolidation. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. More of a B profile. I see very yeah. few lines, but more of a B profile. Yeah. Okay. And R five um, taken at the posterior axillary line. Um, so plural sliding, irregular plural, so plural consolidations. Yeah. Being clearly, I saw. I mean, B B lines. Well. I, and I think I saw some A lines. I don't know whether I'll describe this mainly. I think this is probably a B profile. This is a B profile. B. For me, it's a B profile. You've got an alveologram at the top with, you know, subplural consolidation, uh, a little bit of atelectasis in those areas. And you're right. I mean, those you, technically when the baby breathes in, uh, theoretically, you see the, the B 
profile shrink a bit and that's when that a line in the middle appears but when yes. the baby expires it basically becomes a total white kind of an appearance so compact b lines in inspiration and then when he expires it basically coalesces together so a b profile yep and these are clearly subplural consolidations are they not airborne That's, i would call them subplural consolidations yep okay um so i i think i i give a broad score of eight yeah and i thought it was more of an ais pattern with um, lots of b lines um baby was ventilated and still in air and i mean when i did this scan baby was in air minimally ventilated and I was a bit conflicted looking at the ultrasound findings. Um, it was when when should I think of extubating this baby? Baby was minimally ventilated with very good gases, but looking at the ultrasound findings, so I was in a bit of a dilemma because clinically baby looked stable, ultrasound findings looked like I should be giving the baby another dose of curacao. So, so what it is what we don't know is what the lung ultrasound findings were before. Okay. And I think if you had serial lung ultrasounds, I mean, you have the right lung, which is decently well aerated. Okay. Uh, you know, kind of with a double lung point. Uh, the left lung, I would agree, is pretty solid in terms of having quite good going RDS over there. And the BRAT score, again, just to say that when Rosalind Bratt did the study, the sensitivity and specificity for the second dose of surfactant was mm. uh, was not evaluated as well. My 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 feeling is in this situation you must never disregard the clinical status of the baby. You must always correlate with the clinical status of the baby. And if the baby is telling you something else, uh, your lung ultrasound shows some. You know, an option there is give him a little bit more time, mm. and reevaluate and see. And I mean, if he continues to improve, the work of breathing remains stable. Then I I'd probably if this baby is in air give him a give him a go a trial of extubation and see how he manages and again I, I i always say clinical correlation is absolutely key so look at your baby and sometimes you get conflicted by the ultrasound but it's very similar with x-rays as well where i occasionally get babies who i've i've done an x-ray on which looks like moderate rds and i'm just debating should i give him that second dose of surfactant at 12 hours i think if you extubated and give him a go you'd be as right if you gave him another dose of surfactant and extubated, you'd be as right. But following the clinical course, if you kept him tubed and didn't give surfactant is also an option. So all three on the table. Yeah, well, interestingly, I just left the baby alone. And a few hours later, we had to extubate him because he was getting about late. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I was just crack on and see. She was okay. So yeah. 29 weaker? Yeah, 29 weaker. Antenatal steroids? Two doses, but was born in poor condition because of abruptio placenta, poor cord gases. So I think I was being very cautious because with a bad start, I was anticipating problems. So I saw the long ultrasound and I was like, okay, maybe it's going to be bad, but clinically baby looked better. So I just went with the clinical um, correlation and sure. extubated and she was fine. Lovely. Well done, Doris. Uh, doctor, uh, who's got the hand raised? Somebody's got the hand raised. That's me. Yeah, go for it, Dr. Zaradin. Just a hypothetical question, because this is a very interesting discussion. Mm. Uh, that's uh, Dr. Doris. If, if if you haven't had the um, the knowledge and the skills of doing a lung ultrasound scans, what would you have done with this baby, having him uh, in, a, in a minimal ventilation settings in air? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question, Dr. Zaradin. Um, because yeah, it would have just you know what, just extubate. So yeah, so yes, so would have gone with the clinical correlation because in air, breathing well, stable, it's very good gases. Yeah, just go ahead and extubate. Yeah, I will. I will go with the option too. Yeah, yeah. And thank you. I would completely endorse it. And what I'd say is again, when we do a lung ultrasound, I mean, this is a twenty-nine week steroided. Was it? Was she a girl? Yeah, a girl. A yeah. girl. Uh, we all know that the you know the opposite sex has just got better protoplasm than us, and I think the other aspect of it is when you're doing a lung ultrasound, also look at the activity of the baby. What's been happening? Has the baby been handled? Has he been moved? Small things like that can result in you know slightly worse appearance than how the baby is clinically. So take all those factors into account. I mean, we'll be looking at some cases today, which you are going to diagnose. 
but uh, clearly that you know there's some food for thought in how, how those small things that we do can sometimes make a lung ultrasound look worse than a baby is actually clinically but the opposite is also true where you might handle a baby uh, and suddenly the baby's got work of breathing and a lot of problems but actually from your perspective the lung ultrasound doesn't look so bad so clinical correlation for me what's happened to the baby how the baby is how he, you did the ultrasound was there a struggle was he fighting you know with the issues that may have compromised how your images look you must must look at that i can see that dr hasun has joined us we're really grateful dr hasun and thank you thank you. go for it please we've seen some beautiful cases today and i mean uh, my compliments to all of you who are presenting uh, well done So this is uh, preterm baby, 36 weeks for uh, normal delivery. Uh, GBS unknown and infant of diabetic mother admitted for respiratory distress and started on high flow nasal cannula, 0.5 uh, FiO2. Then uh, for increased work of breeze and high FiO2 intubated and giving Cerventa. This one, just X-ray is showing RDS, but just we did it, I, I didn't have the opportunity to do it before intubation. So we did it at 24 hour uh, of life. Um, if we start with R1, uh, we can see a normal uh, <coughs> sin pleura, well sliding, some beeline, and also AB profile with uh, sin pleura and sl good sliding pleura. This is R1. R2, uh, also the same. Uh, we have uh, sin pleura, good sliding, and a mainly B profile, lateral side, but uh, with many B line. And I don't know if we can call it subpleural, some small subpleural consolidation here on R2. My feeling is more comet tails. Comet? Yep. Okay, fine. For me, um, uh, yeah. yes, yep. sorry. So just again, the pleura looks quite regular. Uh, you've got just yeah. when I look at R1 uh, as well, you've definitely got a B profile. All I'd say is you can reduce your depth. What's the baby uh, distation and weight? It's efficient is 36 week. Okay, it's done. Uh, weight 2.3 or 2.5. Okay, so it's decent sized. Four centimeters would be enough. What frequency are you using? Yeah, this is um, Siemens uh, linear, linear probe and 12 hertz. Yeah, you can drop the frequency, sir. Just it'll give you better depth. Okay. Okay. Yes. I I I, yeah, I did it uh, last time the last uh, baby and it worked. So Beautiful. we can decrease it by percentage. So it go sure. down to eight hertz and we can go up to twelve or to thirteen hertz. So uh, here are three uh, subplural consolidation. Uh, yeah, definitely subplural consolidation. Yes. Consolidation and B yeah. profile and good sliding and irregular uh, plural. Well, this one. Um, and then we will go to uh, R4. Yep. And here I want to see, this is the snowflake sign of RDS. Yes or not? Yeah, that's the snowflake sign. So can I just say, this is a beautiful comparison uh, that you see over here. This is the snowflake yeah. sign. The plura is, com you know, it's very thin, barely visible. You've got a complete white lung appearance here. Uh, and that is the snowflake sign. I would agree. Yep. Okay. Good going RDS. Yes, just I did it to see if I can have some the feature of RDS on ultrasound. Yeah, yeah. And even he he received one dose of Cerventa. So if we go to the left, uh, L1, uh, also Plura is sliding, thin B profile mainly, uh, with comet tail and a uh, yes, but no 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 subpleural consolidation. Hmm. Yes, okay. I would agree. So uh, L2 also we have uh, good the plural uh, sliding thin some B, uh, B line and A profile also. Yeah, can I just say that your image on the right, can you see why it's so important to have a perpendicular probe? Yeah. So what is happening yes. is when you lose your perpendicularness, what mm. those those subplural consolidations that you can see, some comet tails, they, they yeah. disappear completely. They appear more like comet tails when you lose your profile, but actually there are some subplural consolidations there. So, oh, okay. This yeah, is one. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, you know, okay, okay, very, okay. very important that we try to keep the probe as perpendicular as possible. Yeah. I don't have, I don't know if, if you have this problem, but some baby really on, on uh, big ones, we, 
big ones. Yani you have, yeah. We are struggling to get the, this view, especially left side. Yeah. And uh, yeah. here are three. And yeah. uh, sorry, L3. Yeah. Uh, so the plural is irregular, sliding, yeah. and also subplural with the snowflake sign. Uh, the other one also here is obvious. This is yeah. we call it also, we can call it this one shred sign, no? Hello? No, I wouldn't call it shred sign. This is basically uh, subplural consolidations with atelectasis. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a higher grade of uh, subplural consolidation, kind of grade four, very similar to a snowflake sign uh, with sliding. The plural is not visible. That that would not be shred sign. No, I'll show you shred okay. sign today. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. for, and there is static air bronchogram or we cannot call it? My, my feeling is there probably is a static air bronchogram on the left side in the middle. Hmm. Just uh, the yeah. right-sided image, just below that. Okay. Yeah, but those that's basically broken down plura, subplural hmm. consolidations, micro consolidations with atelectasis. Atelectasis. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I didn't. I didn't put the Doppler study to see. You don't need to. You don't need to. That's. I mean, this is basically superficial to the plura. So, really, what you'd be using Doppler is to differentiate a focal area of large atelectasis. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, my gut feeling is this baby's got good going RDS. You know, even though there's yes. some areas that look very nice. What, what was this baby? This was post surfactant, right? Yes, post surfactant. It was yeah. eight or ten hours post surfactant. Yeah. Yeah. All CRP negative. This baby got extubated after twenty four hours and uh, discharged home after five yeah. days. Yeah. Well, thank you. This is just my kids uh, to see. This is the snowflake sign or not? Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. So I've got some questions. Uh, what is the difference between so there's no difference uh, uh, Dr. Doris so in the chapter on RDS what you'll find is that Dr. Liu and his colleagues have just recently written an article I will try and find it and send it to everybody where they have tried to classify the severity of subplural consolidations the mild kind of appearance would be a ground glass kind of an appearance of subplural consolidations with not much atelectasis. But when you have micro consolidations with atelectasis so that you lose your plural line and you can't see the plural margin, then it appears more like snowflakes just under the plural margin. And that indicates a severe grade of RDS. And they've tried to correlate that with the grades of RDS as seen on chest X-ray. So they've come up with that classification. So it's just another way of kind of saying that this is a severer form. Uh, and Dr. Hassoun, uh, did Dr. Hassoun, Dr. Zaradin had a question about the FiO2 and the vent settings. Uh, FiO2 was uh, after intubation, we decreased the FiO2 to 0.3, and after that, on air and with decreasing the pressure, the second day was extubated. Well done. But at that time, it was FiO2.3, if this is the question. Okay. I'm just going to share my presentation. Uh, today, again, it's a workshop. It's going to be very interactive. So just very quickly share my screen. You're the bosses. You're going to help and you're going to make all the diagnosis. Okay. Am I visible and audible? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, so can I just say that so far, the lung protocols that we've covered have covered two things. So we've covered the presentation of respiratory distress at birth. We've covered late respiratory distress with a few cases and case presentations. But now really, I'm, I'm going to cover the third protocol, which is basically the importance of lung ultrasound in the baby who desaturates acutely. I apologize. I've repeated in twice. A little bit more trigger happy today. But Really, from our perspective, whenever you have a baby on the ventilator, having a structured approach clinically is very, very important because really these babies need to be evaluated and there can be multiple differential diagnosis based on the underlying pathology, the clinical stage at which the baby is presenting with desaturation, as well as the fact that there may be other pathology other than just airway respiratory that might account for some of these changes. Now, desaturation and how you define acute desaturation can vary. So you could have a drop in sats and heart rate, which is a crashing baby, versus a, a gradual drop in saturations and heart rate over a period of a few hours, which again, then culminates in you know uh, an acute presentation. Uh, or you might have 
what I would say is a trend analysis, which basically shows that the saturations have been gradually deteriorating and we've probably reached a tip off point. But if you look at the clinical approach to how we do this, I mean, with all these causes, you clinically assess, you review the baby and just a structured approach that I do is I will go back to airway breathing, the tube position, uh, go through the dope kind of mnemonic, make sure that uh, the tube is not displaced, obstructed. Uh, there's no pneumothorax. Uh, obviously, that theoretically our equipment is working. Uh, you know, it's not kind of a situation where we've got uh, a ventilator that's starting to malfunction. But once you've kind of made that assessment, and if you're kind of in a situation where the clinical assessment shows the significant work of breathing, there is maybe asymmetry in the clinical presentation. Uh, you have better air entry on the right than on the left side, or you have a baby who's recessing against the ventilator with a trend analysis or a gas that shows deterioration, rising CO2s, worsening FiO2, then really what you're looking to do is do some investigations. And the options now, in addition to doing a chest X-ray, uh, are doing a lung ultrasound. I think whenever you have situations like this, you know, uh, especially in babies uh, who present just after birth, but also babies where there's an open duct, you know, postductal saturations, just to make sure you don't have a difference between pre and postductal saturations is important. But I just want to come back to that structure that we've always talked about. So you must think about your, your clinical presentation, the background of the baby, but common things that you think about based on this presentation, you definitely want to exclude an omothorax. And once you've excluded, excluded an omothorax clinically, chest X-ray or by lung ultrasound, Really, there might be other pathologies that might explain why this baby is getting worse. Uh, and that might actually then culminate in a management decision that you will make in order to try and make this baby better. Always clinically correlate. And once you make your management decision, whether you're diagnosing a baby who's deteriorating with pneumonia or sepsis and deciding to start antibiotics, uh, whether you've got a baby who has evolving BPD, who has a problem with maybe atelectasis, a collapse consolidation in a particular area of the lung, secretions, uh, maybe, you know, evolving kind of micro aspirations secondary to reflux. These are all situations where you might see deterioration for the baby on the ventilator. And then we, we, we often see babies who deteriorate with a dropping PVR. And at least for those of you who believe that the duct can create problems with the lung, you know, as the PVR drops, the PDA floods the lungs. Uh, if you have another left to right shunt, that might also be a problem. And then you can get lung edema. But these are all diagnoses that can be made by lung ultrasound and chest X-ray, culminating in a management decision where you will make a change. And really what you need to then be able to demonstrate is improvement. Now, pneumonia and sepsis will take time. And it might mean that you have to do and manage symptoms in this process. That might mean that you have to increase ventilation, recruit lung. And the next Sunday, I will be talking specifically about recruitment maneuvers and how we use lung recruitment strategies in situations like this. That might be the case for BPD atelectasis as well. But if it's worsening lung edema, again, PEEP, diuretics, if you believe in them. Uh, and if you have a pneumothorax, obviously it might need significant intervention uh, to treat that. But please stick with this protocol of thinking and clinically correlating, making a mental model of why you think that is the diagnosis, and then basically a management decision that theoretically should improve things. If you're confused about the diagnosis and you have another colleague who can review lung ultrasounds and you can do peer review, do that. If you're still confused, I would say go for a chest X-ray. And in the learning phase, I would always encourage you to do a chest X-ray to try and correlate your clinical diagnosis. You know. Uh, the most important other thing is if your lungs are completely barned or normal and you have reasons for the oxygen going up, then just think about other causes other than just the lungs. So now what we're going to do is groups of two again. So who would like to go first? Okay, I'm all right going first. Uh, so we've got Doris. Who wants to help Doris? I will help Doris. Okay, Leila. Beautiful. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll let Doris give her opinion and then we're going to do the mental modeling where we'll see what Leila thinks and try and see what we think. So I have a preterm baby who is 24 weeks of gestation. 
this baby is ventilated for two weeks. Uh, background is delivering in a setting of kind of pre prom since about 18 weeks of gestation. The lungs didn't look very bell shaped, but had really good going RDS. I mean, this baby was on high ventilation settings, uh, had an element of PPHN diagnosed clinically with uh, also echo findings, had a trial of nitric, which basically helped the baby alongside the surfactant. And actually by the end of the first week had come down to kind of ventilation settings where we were VG'd on decent you know, volume guarantee about 5.5 .5 to 6 mils per kilo, needing decent pressures. The CRP during this period rose to 27. The baby had completed about 10 days of kind of antibiotics. And as I mentioned, you know, we're kind of about 15 days, six mils of VG. The pressures in the morning were kind of on the ward round 24 to 27. We were achieving those tidal volumes. Uh, we were in about 60% FiO2. The baby kind of had evolving lung disease on the x-rays. The gas was more than acceptable. But about kind of 9.30, people came on for the evening round. And when he was reviewed by the multidisciplinary team, clearly, you know, needing a higher pressure to achieve six mils per kilo on the VG, uh, they put the peep up to try and recruit this baby because the baby was recessing against the ventilator. There was work of breathing. But in FiO2 of 100%, this baby had SATs of 80 and your gas basically was a pH of 7.1 with a CO2 of 73, which equivalent is about 10 kPa kilopascals. Uh, do you want any other details, Doris? Um, okay, you talked about the CRP going up to 27, and this baby is 15 days old at this point. So at this time, was septic excluded? And was there a PDA? Okay, very good. So no heart murmurs that were audible. Uh, mm -hmm. Clinically, the baby had completed antibiotics, you know, a good kind of 10 day course. And the CRP had basically come down to, I think it was 10 or 12. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of once it was coming down, we, we kind of decided with culture negative sepsis that 10 days should be sufficient. Uh, and uh, at this particular point, the baby's not on antibiotics. Okay. And I take it that um, this is the same, the baby has been ventilated since, but. Was there That's lots correct. of secretions, lots of secretions? Were they suctioning lots of secretions? Was there a possibility that the ET tube was blocked? Uh, clinically on examination, they went through dope and they didn't think the ET tube was blocked. Okay. Okay. Good kind of color change on a pericap, kind of routine clinical approach, good loops or flow loops with, with visible inspiration, expiration. And uh, really, I mean, the baby clinically they felt was ventilating. So no equipment failure. Uh, didn't clinically feel the baby had a pneumothorax at that point. It was transluminated, it was negative. So if I just show you the ultrasound. So that's L1. Okay. Um, so for looking at this, um, you can see the pleura. It is um, irregular. Um, I would say it's a little bit, it's fairly irregular. But it's continuous. Um, we can appreciate plural sliding clearly. And it's mainly this is a B profile. I can't see any A lines. Okay. So this is all B lines. Yeah. Uh, so kind of AIS? Yeah. You're happy with AIS? So I wouldn't quite label it white lung yet until I've seen the other lung zones. So J. Lu's definition is for white lung, you should be able to demonstrate this in all regions. So that's L1. Dr. Leila, do you agree? Absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, it could be IS, but I would love to see other, other, other parts. Okay. So take my word for it to say that I did L2, L3, uh, L4, and they were exactly the same, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Maybe compact B lines visible in L2, but exactly the same finding. So kind of a white lung kind of an appearance, but with pools sliding everywhere. So no evidence of a pneumothorax, but good going, what looks like evolving lung disease. Mm -hmm. And this is R1. So uh, R1, the plural looks very regular, as we can see, and uh, lots of subplural consolidations. And uh, can I say um, air bronchograms also on the right hand side of the screen? I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there is plural sliding, and this is 
also a B profile. I can't see any A lines. This is an R1, yeah. And then is this a deep um, consolidation um, on the right side, the lower side of the screen? Okay. Um, what do you guys think? This point. Isn't so, Leila, yeah, there's, I, I just going to focus in this area here. Yeah, I, I see bronchograms. Um, I see bronchogram and they are static. Yes, very good, static. very good. So it could yeah. be it could be consolidation, deep consolidation. Yes. So I would okay. put my Doppler now and see if uh, that would help me. Okay. Okay. Why is the plural line not visible? Probe. Probe. Yeah. Contact with the probe. Okay. Very I good. Mean, the, so fluid, be... the fluid. The fluid is. The fluid and and the and the. Consolidation might prevent the reflection of the plural line, right? So or, yeah. it's a little bit confusing, and I would completely endorse that it's really important from our perspective that we 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 try to get the probe as perpendicular as possible. Uh, I go down to the right lower region, and what do we think? So this is basically R two. Mm -hmm. So R two, yeah, plural looks thick, and but there is plural sliding and clearly B profile. I can't see any E lines at all, compact B. And, and subplural uh, consolidation as well. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, I'm just thinking of our differentials. We certainly don't have a pneumothorax in mm -hmm. either of the L regions, or at least the right R1 and R2 regions. Mm -hmm. uh, there's that area in R1. So yep. let's, so what I've done now is I've basically reduced my depth and mm -hmm. I'm trying to get as perpendicular as possible mm -hmm. and trying to focus to optimize my image. And what can I see? The plural effusion, is that fluid? Okay, mm -hmm. so for plural effusion, you should have fluid between the plural lines. So let's, let's think about, so let's go back to our basics. Can we see a bat sign? No. Okay. Okay, so let's say that this is the bat sign. Then you have a rib over here and you lose everything here. You lose your plura, okay? okay. You've lost your plura here, you agree? Yes, yes. And then you've got an area here, which is... Sorry, we can't see your pointer, it's your pointer. That's your pointer, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, can you see any plura here? No. Okay, and in terms of tissue, what does this look like? Does it look a little bit hepatized to you? Could be. Mm -hmm. I mean, similar to that to the. Yeah, and what you've got is you've got these micro consolidations over here. Yes. So what this in my mind looks like a, an area of probably atelectasis is my worry. Because you don't see bronchograms. But also I can see a lung pulse. And I can see static bronchograms. These are static bronchograms, not dynamic. So if it, it was, your pointer to show what you're, where you're looking at. Your pointer, yes, please, yeah. So some people would interpret this as a fractal sign. It's gonna be a little bit tricky for me to show it to you that way with the pointer. Can you, you can't see the, the, the thing, the, the arrow. Yeah, we see the arrow, yep. Can you see the arrow? Yes. Moving, okay. So, can you see the arrow here? No. Um, the arrow is not moving. Okay, can you see the pen now? Nope. Can you see the pen now? No, now we see it, yes. Okay, yeah. beautiful. So that's Plura all the way through. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. Now, what happens is Plura basically drops away from the margin mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And then you have a large area over here, mm -hmm. which basically looks quite dark and hypoechoic. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. this is atelectasis. There's plura here, and then you basically have an area of what are air bronchograms. So if I just play this again, can you see this? Can you see this is lung pulse? Okay, yeah. So it's never easy to make these kind of diagnosis, but this for me is an area of atelectasis. And you have dropout most probably because you have 
a rib that's coming through, which is giving you that shadow. Mm -hmm. These ribs are quite crowded and close together. So because they're crowded and close together, you have a little bit of dropout. Okay. Now, my question to you is, what are you thinking? <clears throat> so, um, okay, go on. Go on later. So, so multiple uh, subpleural uh, with with atelectasis, um, recruitment for lungs, uh, maybe sedation for this baby. Okay, uh, that's true. So let's go back to airway breathing structured protocol. Mm -hmm. So where is this? Which part of the lung? Uh, right side upper. Okay, right upper. So you've got a whiteout AIS appearance in virtually every other lung field on the left and the right. Mm -hmm. But you've got this area that is very focal in the right upper zone, which basically looks atelectatic. Pleura has moved away from the margin. It's broken. Because you have no pleura visible, you probably don't have aeration in that region. And then you have some air bronchograms with aeration to where air can actually reach, which is this region here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or a deeper consolidation. So mm -hmm. if you have a right-sided upper lobe consolidation collapse, what would you be thinking of? Um, ET tube. Okay. So let's have a look at the ET tube. So this is the suprasternal view. Okay. So this is the aorta coming into view. Mm -hmm. This is the ET tube. It's better okay. visible in the next one. See it? Yes, it's deep. The ET tube is too far, isn't it? Yeah, it's so I can see it right beyond the aorta up till here. Can you see the marker there? See yeah. this? Can you see this coming through? Yes. Yes, yes. So that ET tube is very low. It should be a centimeter above this margin of the aorta. This is the arch. Mm. This is the arch. Can you see the pointer? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Flow through the arch. There's mm. an ET tube coming through there. Now, now, see, that's mm. the ET tube. It's coming all the way down. Mm. It's crossing the arch. So it's low. Mm. So, I mean, this still could be maybe a collapse consolidation, much better visible now. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Can you see that? And when you look at it in this image, it's here. Yeah. So that's a very low ET tube. So normally what the ET tube, when it's at the carina, should be one centimeter above this margin of the aorta, at least one centimeter above. This is well below. So this will most probably be down the right main bronchus. Mm -hmm. And that is you know, what I'm thinking, but what is also very visible to me is because you've got a right-sided collapse consolidation. So I'm just taking you back to this image and mental modeling. Mental modeling is very, very important. So what is happening here is the left lung is basically overinflated, coming in the way. And that's why it's making it so difficult for me to get the aorta. I should be able to see the aorta and the suprasternal view quite easily, but you can see the ET tube all the way down and you can see it very clearly. Okay, so what do we need to do? Pull the tube up. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so now let's pull the tube back. So what I've done is I've dropped my gain and I'm pulling the tube back. Can you see? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. So I'm just dropping my gain so that I can see the tube going back. And it's pulled. This is the margin of the aorta. That's the tube there, one centimeter above. And once we'd done that, we clinically had improvement in the baby. Okay. Can I ask, did you do a chest x-ray? You didn't do an x-ray. X -ray. You made this diagnosis on the long ultrasound alone. Yeah. yeah. And But what we did is we did screen and start antibiotics. Okay. I wouldn't risk it. Hmm. I would never risk it. And that's where discretion is the better part of valor. So our CRP was, I think, six, six or three or something like that. We never hmm. cultured anything. But really, from our perspective, this is something that you must be very careful about. Okay. okay. Thank you. Does that help? And again, what I'd say to you is it's just coming back to the images. It's, it's not as clear cut. And I agree. But for me, it's, it's a diagnosis that I'm making by looking at the rest of the lung as well. I'm kind of wondering, why is it that I have an AIS pattern kind of 
uh, white out in the rest of the lung, but I've just, just got this focal area in the right upper lobe, which, you know, could it be a fractal sign? It's, I, the problem with the fractal sign is, you know, it, it's, it's very focal, very kind of, uh, and this area basically looks like it's definitely got uh, static bronchograms. I think you've got air there and you've got an area of atelectasis that you can see over here. Mm. This entire area is atelectatic. And I think it's because you've lost your right upper lobe. I haven't done a chest x-ray, but as my baby's clinically improved, I mean, theoretically, from my perspective, I've started antibiotics. I don't really need to do a chest x-ray. What I might want to do is look at the duct. And I did look at the duct. And in the aortic view over here, I mean, you can see a, a small duct. When you actually look in the ductal view, it, it wasn't a large duct. In fact, the PVR was still quite high. So I, it's more important rather than ductal size to actually measure ductal shunt and try to evaluate that. So next case, who wants to have a go, guys? I can try. Uh, who's that? Anna. Anna, that's great. Anna, who's who's going to give Anna a hand? D Dr. Hamad, would, would you like to give Anna a hand? I'm happy to. Yes, yes, yes I'm okay. happy to. Sorry, yeah. no, I'm trying sorry. to find my mute button. <laughs> okay, no, that's all right. Okay, so let's just say this is a baby on a ventilator who's developed acute respiratory distress. That's the history I'm going to give you. Suddenly desaturating, FiO2 shot up to 100%, your saturation's about 70. Okay. Mm. The baby's on the ventilator, right? Yeah, yeah on the ventilator. It's a term baby. Uh, intubated, ventilated for respiratory distress and respiratory acidosis. I think I, I can see a really clear sliding in these images. I don't know if it's my, I, I'm looking to a small ecran today. So, but I think there is no, so much sliding. So you feel there's no sliding? Yes. Right? Yeah, excellent. It's okay. moving with the respiration only. Yep. Uh, with the chest. Yep, I would agree. I would agree. Anything and else? And I think we can see a truck sign. Yeah, you can see a truck sign. Anything else? And they line. And yeah. they line. So what do you think your diagnosis is? Uh, pneumothorax okay. on the right side. Yep. Uh, Dr. Hamad, what do you think? I think I agree with the sign she's mentioned as well, but I'm not quite sure at R2 whether you got a liver uh, in the here. Yeah, um, and then That's... on R4, it looks like there is um, a gap which may be like um, maybe air because this is completely black below the plural lines. So it's not a very good quality image. I'm losing my image as I move because of the activity of the baby. But mm. do you think there's plural sliding there? Yeah, there is some. Yes. And then there's sub, so. subplural consolidation on the R4 as well. Uh, My gut feeling is that's not a subplural consolidation. I think you've got rib dropout over here. Mm -hmm. And the darkness at the bottom is basically because I haven't got a good alignment. My gut feeling also is I'm running out of jelly and I should probably apply more jelly and reapply. But I just look at this margin here and look at this margin here and kind of, uh, can you see what looks like at a comet tail here. Yes. So if you have a comet tail here, you must have sliding over here. Mm -hmm. But you have an A profile over here. And do you think there's sliding there? There is, there is some sliding, although the plural lines looks a bit thick. Okay, fair. I mean, what I'd say is that absolutely right. You've got an anterior pneumothorax at this particular point. Small or big? I think it's a small, um, depending on the baby's condition, clinical so, condition. Then so we'll... What did we say about the baby's clinical condition? Desaturating, 100% oxygen, SATs of 70. Uh, then that uh, 
might be um, attention even pneumothorax because of the desaturation and need relief by emergency thoracotomy. Yep. Uh, I, I yep. think we have air in the R4, so I think it's big. Yeah, so this is really important that the way you're quantifying your pneumothorax is based on clinical correlation. I mean, I'm just giving you uh, the fact that, you know, if you look at above to below, you've got air all the way from the top. I mean, that's thymus for you that's coming in there, a complete A profile. So that's all the ribs down to the liver. So there's air all the way there. And when you move laterally, my gut feeling is, I think you have sliding up till here. I'm not sure that you have any sliding in this area here. And this is the, the posterior axillary line. That's why I've written that this is the posterior axillary line, is that if you have air all the way to the posterior axillary line, you know, that's a fairly decent pneumothorax. Uh, so let's have a look at the left side. Let's see what you think about the left side. On the first scan, is there is the thymus in the yeah. left side? Yep, yeah, that's thymus. I agree. Yeah. That's thymus. Yep. Yeah. And uh, there is an A profile. Yep. Yeah. Where in the line shift? Because uh, the thymus should be seen on the left side, isn't it? Very good. So again, just another indicator of the severity. I mean, your thymus is. Uh, and classically, if you remember, when you have a pneumothorax, and in particular, if you have a bilateral pneumothorax, then you get the sale sign. Thymus gets outlined on both areas. But is there any other marker that will tell you that there's significant mediastinal shift? So you have virtually all heart there. It's very difficult yes. to see any lung at all. I'm really struggling. Uh, what do we think about sliding? It looks normal to me, especially on the one on the top, on the left. For me, on my screen on the right side, the sliding looks normal. Um, and I can see normal B lines and A lines. Yep. So, so what do we want to do that I have not done over here? And that I'm not showing you on, yeah, you need to do M mode, guys. So... I think what I'd say is go back to the basics. So this is a different case from the previous one where what we're really trying to do is uh, think about pathology in a focal area, but here clearly we've got an omothorax and really what we need to be able to demonstrate for an omothorax is those four signs. So R1, R2, uh, up to R4, you've got a lung point, you've got three and really M mode in this situation showed a classical barcode sign. I've taken it off just because I want you to think and really over here when you put m mode in this area we basically got a seashore sign so there is basically lung sliding that is clearly visible uh, also you know from our perspective significant mediastinal shift but it's very very obvious when you actually go to l3 so when you look at l3 you know you have a b profile with some a lines and really good plural sliding so big pneumothorax on the right side uh, we, I mean, from our perspective, had a very small pneumothorax on the left side, but uh, kind of this was a baby who had a needle thoracentesis and a chest strain on that right side. So again, you can make a diagnosis of this situation where a baby's desaturating on the ventilator, if you think of your differentials. And I mean, this scan took very, very uh, short period of time for me to do while I'm waiting for the chest X-ray to come. So, you know, uh, we needled based on clinical diagnosis, even before we did the chest X-ray, we didn't wait. And we had furious bubbling to the point where, you know, we got ready, the baby clinically improved, saturations improved. We then did the chest X-ray confirmed and we went for a chest strain because there was still residual pneumothorax on that. So again, very powerful tool in the right, uh, if used in the right way in a baby who's ventilated. Who wants to have a go at this case? I Please. will. Okay. Yes, me too also. Okay, so it's Dr. Hassoon and Dr. Rana. Dr. Rana. Dr. Rana, I'm sure. I, I try to figure out by remembering voices. So gradually I will, <laughs> yeah, I will. So this is uh, a 23 weeker twin. Uh, this, uh, these babies delivered, having had a single dose of 
antenatal steroids, both boys. Uh, mother went into spontaneous preterm labor, but she, from our perspective, had uh, significant problems with uh, some APH as well. Uh, the babies eventually, I mean, the plan from our perspective was that we, we'd like to keep the babies in, try and see if tocolysis worked. It didn't, so the babies delivered. And they were intubated, ventilated at birth. They had uh, some uh, surfactant. They ended up with two doses. Uh, never been extubated, treated with antibiotics for a period of five days with no significant rise in CRP. Uh, the reason for treating with antibiotics was basically the clinical presentation, worry of APH. I think a low threshold for us over here because of the profile with which babies present. But on day 15, what we've had is we've gone from about 40% oxygen over a period of time to 100% oxygen with a worsening respiratory acidosis, pH drop below 7.2. We were already on VG at six per kilo. So the decision was made to give this baby a trial of oscillation and then do a chest X-ray. But before that, we had an opportunity to do a lung ultrasound. Anything else in the history that you want to know? Any PDA finding is significant. So not PDA. clinically audible at this particular point over the ventilator, no heart murmurs. So, and uh, pulse is not bounding. Uh, perfusion is good. Lactates on the gas are normal. But yeah, a CO2s are, you know, they've gone into... But maybe not, uh, not septic also. So clinically, it's always tricky. I mean, what it says, well perfused, no cardiovascular problems, but definitely a rising FiO2. So I'll be honest to say to you, we screened and started antibiotics. We, but uh, to say I didn't have a CRP result when I did the lung ultrasound. Here, we would never risk it in this situation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Just, yeah. just do the basics, just ensure that we have done dope and there is nothing immediate we have to do. Beautiful. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So before we do the lung ultrasound, that's exactly what I want to hear. We did dope. We transluminated, no evidence of a clinical pneumothorax bilaterally. Uh, we also, from our perspective, kind of, you know, uh, with an oscillator, you want to look at bounce, but just capnography, pedicap, good color change. Uh, you know, uh, we went and started with a map to above what we normally do. And uh, clinically, I mean, no doubt that the baby had good bounce, sedated and paralyzed as well, this baby, because uh, we, we were in 100% and we were saturating high 80s, actually. So mm. I'll show you the ultrasound. If she lets me move forward. So this is L1 and L2. Shall I start or look at Go for it, yeah. No, go yeah. for it, absolutely. Yes, please. So on L1, uh, we can see... Uh, Sure about the quality of this scan, first of all, uh, is just to look at the top where there I can see some ribs, but not all ribs. So I don't know whether the probe is just a slightly twisted. You're uh, right. You're correctly. absolutely right. So L2 is better than L1. L it's slightly twisted. Yeah. But you can see why well, we can two. see, yeah, but we can still see uh good lung sliding with um uh, the plural line looks uh, slightly thickened and mainly B profile on L1, but I can see some lung, lung aeration uh, towards the right side of the um, of L1, so at the top of the left lung. Um, towards the bottom or the left side of L1, uh, it looks like there is a deep consolidation there. So that's uh, hard. So that's hard. This is very important. I just want so that people understand. That's hard, but yeah, this area here definitely. You it's worry the about ecogenic, uh, yeah, that ecogenic area. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, so on L two, uh, yes, that that looks better. Uh, the uh, plural line generally looks uh, all uh, continuous and irregular, but there is a drop in um, in continuity right in the middle. Uh, with some air bronchogram, right? Like it looks like subpleural consolidation. Very right good. there in the middle, yeah. uh, with mainly just a B profile. So that's the area of uh, subplural consolidation that you can see in L1. You're right. And I would say that similar kind of areas that you see over here. 
So very good. So, I mean, just in terms of your clinical feeling, is there a pneumothorax here? I don't think there is a pneumothorax. Okay. Is there a large area of atelectasis collapse consolidation? Well, it looks more like uh, just... Um, bad RDS. Worst bad RDS. Uh, some some subglural consolidation. It doesn't look like there is... That area looks like um, um, an echogenic area, which is uh, probably consolidated but no large areas of consolidation or focal collapse that I can see. Any fractal sign or shred sign? Mm, not really convinced. I mean, there is that area on L2 where the plural line is broken and there is this area, the echogenic area right um, under. So, but I'm not, I'm not convinced that there is a shred so sign there. What you're doing beautifully, Dr. Rana, is your mental modeling. And this is where I'd say that often, and I want you as a, a group, basically it should be barn door, shred sign. And I, I can't see any evidence of a shred sign over here, just some subplural consolidation. 3L4. So L3, uh, there, is, um, there is lung sliding. The plural line does look uh, broken and irregular, mainly in the middle and uh, towards the top of the screen, uh, to, of, the, of, of the baby mainly, the, on the area exactly where that uh, uh, indicator is. Um, I can see mainly B profile, but some lung aeration towards uh, the left of the screen. And there is there are still the areas of uh, subplural sub consolidations with um, uh, just these echogenicities. Yeah. Look, they look like more dynamic uh, bronchogram rather than static, where that uh, indicator is on L3. They're more static. So again, dynamic will move in and out. I mean, these disappear and appear with inspiration, expiration, mm. but they stay in the same place. They're not snake-like moving in and out. Yeah. So my gut feeling is these are static, mainly this region here. But I, I completely agree with the other findings that you've described. So what about L4? So with L4, um, again, the plural line looks ir irregular. Uh, there is, uh, but it's sliding uh, mainly towards the right side where there is mainly, um, there are some, uh, there is some lung aeration there with some A lines. Uh, but towards the left side of the screen, uh, there is uh, mainly a B profile with subplural consolidations. And again, this, um, I think the probe is slightly twisted as well on L4. Yep. You're right. Um, yep. And you have and heart coming in. So what I'm trying yeah. to do, and the reason, uh, you know, it's the challenge of trying to get the heart uh, out of the way to try and get the best image. So, uh, but I would completely agree. Subplural consolidations, you know, static air bronchogram just there. And really, I mean, if you were to mental image here, L1, L3, L4, uh, what do you think? I think generally it all looks like um, subplural consolidation with mainly a B profile. Looks Some like lung aeration. Some lung aeration? Some lung bit. aeration. Uh, looks more like um, evolving lung disease. Beautiful. Based okay. on this. Yeah. Now let's have a look at the right side. So you've seen the left side. Okay. Using the same gain settings. So just remember, I'm using the same gain settings. Sorry, do you want me to have a go at that one as well, or Dr. Hassoun? I don't want to no. take that. <laughs> so Dr. Hassoun. Okay, okay. Uh, so right side also, we have here uh, plura is sliding, irregular. Uh, so if we start from the left side of the imagery, subplural consolidation, uh, and also with the, at the right, also the subplural consolidation or atelectasis, because you have static, I think static bronchogram. Uh, or dynamic, this one on the left, on the right side. Um, on R2, also, this, here, here this plural is sliding <coughs> on R2, R, okay, and here I don't think this is 
like atelecta this because we, this is a plural is not is not uh, obvious and but I can't see Can let I? me see the air bronchogram yeah. because it's not working the image. Yeah, one sec. The loop it's not working. So like static also there is static air bronchogram. Uh, plura is not broken totally so in the, in the right and the left. Uh, so with some, you know, most probably at this with some consolidation also. I, okay, I, so, I should put a Doppler here. Okay. Guys, there's a lot of confusion still with static and dynamic air bronchograms. And my gut feeling is I'll probably go through the consolidation and the atelectasis kind of section again. Uh, the reason I say that is, so what I'd say is the dynamic air bronchograms, if you see my fingers, can you see me, everybody? Yes. Yes. So they move in and out like this. Static air bronchograms will stay in the same place and they may appear and disappear. Or they may stay there because actually what has happened is air is trapped and can't go back out. Now, theoretically, if you have a dynamic air bronchogram, that's consolidation for you, 100%, because air moving in and out means it's unlikely that you have atelectasis or collapse. But really, for a complete atelectasis from the lung margin, you should not see any pleura at all. Now, look at this kind of L3, L4 image. You can see pleura here. It's broken. It's irregular. Can you see an L3? Yes. L4 as well. Pleura is yeah. broken. It's irregular. When we go to on, you can see pleura over here. Can you see that? Yes. And then really, can you see the thin pleura there? It's very um, thin. And oh, you've got okay. this irregular margin over here. So can you see when I press R2, can you see this image here? That's pleura. Okay. okay. And that's lung that's basically destroyed below it. That is, I agree, static bronchogram that you see. A little bit irritating today, it's not working. But can you see how irregular the margins are? So what do we call yes. that? What is that? Just sign, fractal sign. Fractal That's fractal sign. sign. That's fractal sign. Sign. If you have that kind of an appearance in a baby who previously had RDS, what, what would we be thinking? So if, if you look at the left side, do you have any evidence of shred sign or a fractal sign? No. Oh. And on the right side, you've got some evidence. So let's look at the yes. other regions. Okay. Oh, okay. On R3 also, we have static bronchogram and there were no pleura here, no? At the R3. So again, you've got here. Here, I would worry that you have subpleural consolidations with atelectasis because you don't have pleura. Can you see? No mm. pleura. Yes, no pleura. Now, do you, do you realize the difference between the two? Yeah. So there's pleura there with basically regular margins below that. So that's a shred and a fractal sign. Again, pleura visible here, probably disappearing. But can you see any pleura here? No. Okay. So this is subpleural consolidation with atelectasis. Now, these areas here, they're static air bronchograms. Can you see? Oh. They're not moving in and out. They stay there. Because air cannot move in and out. So that's because there's atelectasis. They're at the margin of atelectasis. So air is reached here. You've got lung that's fallen away. What about here? Here, I think the plura, we can see the plura. So can't see it over here, but definitely over here. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely over here. So, I mean, these are large areas of shred sign. But Shred here, sign. basically, you've got lung that's completely destroyed with a large consolidation falling away from the pleura. So if, if you were thinking of a diagnosis here, what would you be thinking of? It could be pneumonia, this one. Absolutely. It's pneumonia. So really, I've, the reason I'm thinking pneumonia at this particular point is it's focal. It's on one side. Uh, I've got shred sign. Uh, Clearly, from my perspective, this is probably the reason for deterioration. And I mean, oscillating this baby and putting the map up basically allowed better recruitment uh, to allow us to saturate this baby. Uh, but the baby remained in a significant amount of oxygen for a significant period of time. So 
again, I'm just coming back to the fact what is mental modeling is very important in this situation. But really, we grew Klebsiella from the ET secretions and our CRP went up. So it, it was quite an interesting kind of a presentation. This is the lower part of the lung field. Whether there's a small element of fluid there, it's debatable. Might just be that that's the diaphragm coming in. But I mean, if you look at the image, it's a classical shred sign for you. Any confusion about the shred sign and the fractal sign? Mm, yes. Uh, hi. Yeah. So in the R3 and R4 images, if we can't see any plural line, is this, uh, this isn't the, the shred sign? So what I'd say is this could be a large area of mixture of atelectasis and shred sign. It's very large if it is, because the lung is, you know, that's a significant proportion of the lung that's destroyed. Basically, the shred sign is described. Can you see my marker? Yes, yeah, yes, I can see. That is that is a classical shred sign for you. I'd say you mix more atelectasis. You've lost lung from the margin. Subplural static air bronchograms consolidation. Uh, again, okay. here, here the margins, they're not as irregular. You don't have that cavitation. You have a little bit of dropout from the rib over here. So that's a caustic shadow for you. So for me, this is consolidation again is consolidation. Here is atelectasis consolidation. Some people might say that, you know, that's a very large red sign. For me, the margins aren't irregular enough. I think that's more of a, an atelectasis with the consolidation. Okay, thank you. But for me to say that this baby's got pneumonia, no doubt about it. Uh, can we use Doppler to differentiate between the two? Absolutely. This the Absolutely. That's what I was going to say that uh, really what you need to do is you need to put Doppler. And if you have clear blood vessels, and I haven't done that over here, uh, I completely agree. Uh, you have blood vessels over here. That that really tells you that you've got the console or Doppler, you know, in this particular region or kind of, that would tell you this is more atelectasis. My, my, my advice to you is don't get too hung up on it, guys. I want you to treat lung ultrasound as what you can see barn door. What I cannot see here is dynamic air bronchograms anywhere. And really, it's really important that you guys know the difference between static and dynamic air bronchograms. That's really crucial. So we might just maybe during the revision phase, when we're doing consolidation, is, is cover that again. I, I've, I've got a library of about 500 to 1,000 images, maybe trying to look to try and see whether we've got better images of... Uh, dynamic versus static bronchograms. But can you see how they don't disappear here? The reason they don't disappear at this particular point is because you've got air that's trapped within them. There are no fluid bronchograms. They're bright, they're not dark. And they definitely don't go in like a snake. Just one question about R3. Did you see the pleura on R3? So I can't see it over here. The question is, is it here? I can't see it. Yeah. It's just broken. Okay. So it's irregular there, but I can't see it over here. Oh, That's okay. why I think there's an area of atelectasis. R4, I can definitely see it here. I can see it. It's very irregular. Here, whether you can see a thin margin, I cannot see it over here at all. Again, is my probe perpendicular? Is that an issue? Do I need to move my probe up to get a slightly better view? So what I've done over here is I've, I've actually zoomed in a little bit. Maybe zooming out might have given you a better image. So play with your probes. But in terms of process, I think nobody will doubt this is most likely pneumonia. Put on it vessels, you're really thinking pneumonia at this particular point. It's focal as well, as opposed to being in both lungs. So again, if you have a situation where you've got changes like this, you know, chronic lung disease can also present like this. But really, the, the changes would be diffuse symmetrical more. Oh, sometimes the right lung might be more damaged than the left. This is quite an insidious presentation. So you clinically correlate. You start antibiotics. You watch your CRP. Your CRP comes back elevated. That's why we're thinking this is kind of infected. So last case. This is a very nice case. So Kenaz, do you want to have a go at this? Maybe with Sujit? 
Yeah, sure. Can you hear me, uh, Alok? I can hear you, Sajid. Uh, can us? Are you? Can us might not be able to respond. Uh, I'm happy to go ahead, Alok. Go for it. Go for it, Sajid. So, 34 weeks. This is not an intubated, ventilated baby. So, this baby was. Oh, I'm sorry. The... I can zoom it now, finally. The thing yeah. had frozen. That's great. That's great. So, we have canals as well. So, this is basically a decent sized 34 weeker. You know, this baby was about 2.8 kilograms. So, kind of a decision was made once the baby was born because the baby didn't have signs of respiratory distress at birth, did not need resuscitation. Uh, it was a spontaneous onset of preterm labor with no other risk factors, membranes were intact uh, with a single risk factor. Uh, the baby was kind of uh, managed, discharged to the mother on the postnatal ward, but an agreement in principle that for babies like this, we normally review babies like this set a few hours to make sure things are going well. We do uh, kind of uh, sugars, and I think there were midwifery concerns about a low blood sugar, the baby was reviewed by a, an SPR, and uh, I think the overall feeling is he looked a little bit cyanosed. Is he a little bit kind of not entirely right? Uh, took the SATS probe, put the SATS probe, preductal saturations were about 88%. Uh, you know, no signs of actually severe respiratory distress, no grunting. The baby seemed comfortable, alert. But I think overall the feeling was because of the hypoxia, we're kind of in a situation where. Uh, at two hours of age, the baby's admitted to the neonatal unit, started on six liters of Optiflow, and has this gas. Uh, the baby's FiO2 gradually builds up, and about kind of three hours of age, we have SATs of 88 to 92. The baby also had a chest X-ray, but I'm not going to tell you what the chest X-ray showed. So I will show you what the lung ultrasound shows. Any questions? <clears throat> what age was the lung ultrasound done, Alok? So about four hours. For us, and I take it uh, from a cardiovascular point of view, no murmurs, femorals, palpable. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely right. Yeah. So I'll give you some more information that I did at this time, but let's have a look at the lung ultrasound. So, so R1, R2, yeah. Yeah, so R1, so I can see multiple uh, ribs, multiple rib spaces. The pleura, uh, the pleural line uh, appears thin. It's regular. Yeah. I can see uh, comet tails uh, right um, to the left of the screen is this tissue like thing, which I think is um, probably the thymus. You're absolutely right. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So I can see clear A lines. There is pleural sliding. And there are a few comet tails that I can see. Sure. And this is on the right side. I can see what looks like a pulsating uh, tissue. I think that's the, is that the heart? Uh, the right side? So here, this, Le yeah. Liver? No, I, I'm still on the left screen, uh, Alok. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Just um, below the thymus. Yeah, you're right, that's heart. That's yeah, heart, yeah. heart pulse coming through. Yep, you're yeah, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. And then on the right screen, uh, so this is uh, R2. Yeah, so I'm seeing again, I'm seeing, uh, so right on the left-hand side, I'm again seeing a tissue-like thing which with no pleural line. I suspect that's probably the thymus yeah. with thin, clear pleural lines yeah. uh, with some comet tails. There is clearly pleural sliding, good A lines, well aerated lung fields. Yeah, uh, and towards the right hand side, I'm seeing tissue like which I suspect, given that this is R2, it is the liver. Yeah. So, what's the difference between the image on the right and the image on the left? So, uh, I I would on the right hand side, I wouldn't have expected to see this thymus like shadow. <laughs> that is the thymus. And then there is yeah. there is um, there is. Um, So I don't there have is, very, yeah. You there is this, uh, yeah, this, the shadow underneath that I'm seeing. So below at around about two to three centimeters. That's hard. Looks, that's hard. So that's the There's heart nothing there. to worry about with that. Mm. So this is image optimization. So what I'm doing is I basically lose my deeper tissue uh, at three centimeters. 
And the reason for that is I'm using a frequency of about 11 here with the linear probe. So mm -hmm. what I've done is, is I've moved down. I basically dropped my frequency and I'm using sharp mode to image optimize. And really what I'm getting is a decent A-line profile with some comet tails, but A-lines that are visible all the way through. Uh, and this is virtually the whole of, you know, R1 and R2. So in terms of kind of, if, if you really want to improve, like if you've got your depth sorted and you want to improve your image for the depth, especially in the GE, you can drop your frequency a little bit to kind of image optimize, which gives you the profile right through to the distal tissue, which kind of is a little bit better defined. So you can see A lines all the way through to the deeper part of the image, which you can't see in this profile. I've also just zoomed out a little bit. So I'm just image optimizing here. Oh, but, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, what do you think uh, about, uh, do you think normal, abnormal? Any? Uh, no, to, so to me, this looks like normal, uh, sure. normal, uh, well aerated lungs. Lovely. So again, this is just another example of the right side. So I'm just, so in the mm. previous image, if I take you back, at this particular point, I just wanted to show you the difference between use of sharp mode. So I basically at this particular point, using a very high sharp mode, which is making my image look blurred on the right side. Actually, <coughs> you can alter CDI on the, and this image is basically in terms of quality for the superficial areas, this image is the best. But if I want to look at the deeper, deeper A lines, I can drop my frequency a bit and I can see A lines all the way through with comet tails at the top. So sometimes just playing around a little bit at this particular point is really helpful in you being able to make uh, a diagnosis, but let's, let's carry on. So this is the left side. So, so on the left side, uh, so again, uh, multiple rib spaces, there is good, Nice thin plural line scene, which is sliding with a few comet tails, A line seen throughout. I can see um, B lines towards the right of the screen um, with a double lung point. Very good. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And again, what I've done is I've just dropped my frequency a bit to get a little bit more depth. And it just means that I can see a slightly better lung point. So over here. Yeah. But A lines visible all the way through, comet tails, really good sliding. That's visible all the way through with the comet tails. You can see it really nicely. So any worries about that for a four hour old baby? You happy? Uh, yes, I'm very happy. Yeah. Okay. So let's just say that uh, R1, R3, R4 and L3, L4 had exactly the same appearances. And this is just, again, I've dropped the frequency to eight over here because I want to get depth all the way through on the left side. So L2. Happy with this? Uh, yes, yeah. So I'm happy there is plural sliding and um, it looks like a, a sandy beach sign, a seashore yep. sign. Yeah, perfect. Okay, visible everywhere. So what's your diagnosis? So, uh, Transient tachypnea is a possibility. Yep. Uh, so but, you're absolutely right. It's just a lot of oxygen to be in um, mm. and still not saturating. So uh, respiratory distress is another possibility. No respiratory distress at all. There are no signs. This baby is not recessing, not grunting. And these saturations, are they pre-ductal or are they post-ductal? So these are pre-ductal saturations. So, so I put this baby in 100%. Mm. And Was I there an improvement? No, I could not saturate this baby. 80, so that's a, that's a hypoxia test yep. failing. So you need to look at the heart and yeah. think of cardiac. Absolutely. So just it goes back to that first point that I made right at the start, that if you look at a lung ultrasound and it's bound or normal in situations like this, then you need to think of alternative causes other than respiratory. And uh, really, you know, if the ET is secure, it's not low, your lungs are normal, think about potential other causes. I mean, this baby we eventually diagnosed with supracardiac DAPVC. And 
used uh, very well to demonstrate normal lung. And this is very nice transitioning normal lung with you with a little image optimization to try and make sure that I can see the deeper areas, make sure there are no deep consolidations. So any questions? I think in summary, what I'd say, you know, what is very important is that for this aspect, if you're desaturating on the ventilator, go back to basics. Dope is a mandatory test, clinical diagnosis first, transluminate, check your ET position, make sure your tube's not low, you know, uh, for babies over a kilo, weight plus six, you know, that it might be something as small as that clinically that actually helps you with your diagnosis. But if you then think that there's a possible respiratory cause for this deterioration, depending on the clinical presentation, background, age of presentation, then pneumothorax pneumonia, BPD atelectasis, and PDA, as Dr. Almedina has shown us, a, a diagnosis that can, can actually be made by lung ultrasound with clinical correlation. I think the important thing is once you've made a, a management decision, what you really want to demonstrate is that this baby is getting better with your management. Now that might be insidiously getting better if you are needing to treat sepsis or pneumonia, but something like a kind of a collapse consolidation with a tube down the right main bronchus, you pull the tube back and clinically the baby should improve over a period of time with recruitment maneuvers. So, you know, it's, it's, it's important from our perspective to keep an open mind. If your lung is completely normal, then really absolutely no doubt, think about other causes. If your heart then is completely normal, then you might have to think about causes outside of that. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've had a, a TPN extravasation in a UVC for a baby that we were managing who basically had, uh, you know, significant rise in oxygen requirements. And the abdomen was basically rock hard. We were losing our FRC. Uh, and uh, that, that might be the cause. So that in summary is how you use lung ultrasound. We've covered three protocols now. We've covered early respiratory distress soon after birth. We've covered late respiratory distress and we've covered acute desaturation on the ventilator. On the coming Friday, Dr. Nadia Yusuf will be talking about heart-lung interaction. And then I will be talking about use of lung ultrasound for the purposes of lung recruitment on Sunday. Any questions very quickly? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah. I have a break in my net. I didn't understood what are the next sex sessions. The next sessions are uh, heart lung interaction by Nadia on Friday. And then I'll be talking about use of lung ultrasound for lung recruitment on the ventilator CPAP. Yep. On okay. Sunday. Sunday or Saturday? Because in the program is the 1st of April. Is it the 1st of April? It's Saturday. Okay, it's Saturday then. It's Saturday. Okay. Yeah. 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 Somebody else had a question. Yes, yes please. Um, the bronchogram, the static bronchogram, can they be seen in atelectasis, or you don't see bronchograms at you can. all? You can. You can. So you it's only the dynamic you don't see, right? So what I said is, when you have atelectasis, can be microatelectasis. This is okay. where we need to differentiate what is a large area of atelectasis. Now, if you have a large area of atelectasis, you might still have air coming into the proximal parts of the lung. Now, if you have air coming into the proximal parts of the lung, you might remember in my lecture I said at the margin, you might have static air bronchograms followed by distal atelectasis. So mm -hmm. I think it's really important, guys, anybody who's missed that lecture, it is visible, go through it again. But maybe next time before I start the talk on lung recruitment, I will show you lots of images of static versus dynamic air bronchograms. In lung ultrasound, the caveat is the same as it is in cranial ultrasound. Try not to overinterpret. Try to keep it simple. Try to pattern recognize. Don't get too confused. Overall, differentiating atelectasis from collapse consolidation, really, there is an element of both when you have a large collapse consolidation. Microatelectasis, where you have atelectasis from the pleural margin, that you see in an alveologram with RDS, it's got a completely different pathophysiology. You've basically got surfactant deactivation with highline membrane disease there. So try not to confuse those things. But more importantly, what I'd say from your perspective is look at the entire lung field, clinically correlate, and more or less, you will always come to the mental model of what your likely diagnosis is going to be. 
This is very important because when you do your testing and you give the exam, there will be lots of images for you to interpret in relation to clinical history. Remember, when you give your exam, there's no time limit for how long you take to answer the 50 questions. You can sit there for the whole day and do it, but there will be a lot of pattern recognition that you will need to do. So, I mean, I'd say keep it simple. Use the pattern recognition as you, it should be barn door, barn door shred sign. But even if it's not barn door shred sign and there is an element of atelectasis there because you can't see the plural margin. Actually, clinically, if you correlate and you look at that, a focal area of that kind of clinical presentation, I would be really worried about infection if I had that kind of presentation. It's not subalveolar, subplural atelectasis along the whole margin of the lung that you see in snowflake sign. It's a very focal area that you see. So, you know, keep it simple. Any other questions? Lovely. I'm really grateful, guys. Uh, more to come. And really what I'd say is once we finish on the 15th, after that, I would really be guided by you as to how much handholding you want, how much practice you want, how frequently you want to have the peer review sessions. But for those people who want to do it, I will be using the, the structured assessment form for you. It'll be less, less of kind of uh, me talking, more of you talking and peer review. And really what we do is at the end of it, we try and score ourselves. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.